Hello everyone, this is Arif from Fantasy. So in the previous session, we have came to the core concept of that DAC, which is a digital to unlock converter. And we have uh, created a sine wave and we have converted this uh, audio to a digital value. And we have used those things. Okay. So today we are going to get into the concept of LoRa. Okay. LoRa is an external module. We are going to interface with this STM32 controller. So what is this uh, LoRa stands for? It is a long range spectrum. Okay. Okay. So we will get into the class. So before uh, before get interfacing the module, we have to know the what are the features of the module, right? So this is derived from the chip spread spectrum. So what is this chip spread spectrum? So this is a wave uh, which is like radio frequency. The bats are the waves which the bats use to communicate. So those waves are this called derived from this uh, chip spread spectrum. So this LoRa is using this waves. So what this uh, waves can do is data can be transmitted at the longer range compared to the Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth or a Zigbee. So when compared with these uh, other networks, the LoRa is too much longer. Okay, so it can reach from zero to fifteen kilometer. So in suburban it can reach from uh, 0 to 15 km and in uh, urban it is 2.5 km. Okay. So what is the next thing is it is operates on the license free sub gigahertz band. Okay. So what are the frequencies? 915 MHz, 868 MHz and 4, uh, 433 megahertz. So these are the spectrum at which it transfers the data. So at the Asia level we will use this uh, 430, uh, 433 spectrum this uh, megahertz of frequency at this megahertz frequency it is going to transfer the data and it can also operate at the 2 gigahertz to achieve the higher data rates so what is this is as per the range the it be equally proportional to this uh, data rates so if the range is increased the data rates uh, transfer will be the speed of the data transfer will be reduced when this uh, range is reduced the data transfer speed is Increase so it is vice versa. Okay, so we will get into the next thing. So you can see this is a chip spread spectrum. So this is how the LoRa is. So this is a spreading factor. Okay, so this is how the waves are transferred. Okay, so before uh, getting into the next topic, now you can convert this uh, master class into an internship, guys. So it is in a one month internship on ML systems. So we are uh, already learning the STM32, which is uh, based on ARM Cortex M4 in a register level, right? So we are uh, learning right in a register level. So it will be a uh, very much useful for you. So you can, um, you have to, when you have to improve yourself, you have to prax practice on these things. So while practicing, you need some internship, uh, like a uh, reference, like um, what are the ins, uh, what are the bugs, all things. You have to need some reference, right? So the, for that purpose, uh, this internship is provided. And uh, in what is the benefit of this internship is uh, lots of topics uh, topics you can uh, refer to this internship and uh, lots of things going to be added in this internship like uh, CAN, LINS, uh, lots of communications and uh, tax core concepts all coming on the pipeline of courses. So our, uh, so don't miss this opportunity. Our fees is 1200. So our discount price is 599. Okay. So you can use this uh, ESMC1 coupon code. And by using this, you will get, you will have to pay only 691 only. So by paying this fees, you can register for the internship and you can get more benefits. Okay. So now we will get into what are the benefits you will get. So as I said, so we are uh, practicing lots of codes, right? So we are practicing lots of codes in the live session and uh, we are developing lots of code concepts. So you have to practice yourself uh, for making a, to upskill yourself, right? So when you are practicing, you have to, you will come with uh, some errors or you will have some uh, doubts related to those things or you will uh, after executing the code you will some uh, you will not get output like this things. so for that purpose you can refer to those these intent these 30 days videos so what is the best benefit is the 30 days of master class uh, live sessions will be available as a recordings in this internship so and lots of topics are also going to be added to those videos so it will be accessible for the, those recordings will be accessible for 90 days so you can uh, use this uh, those videos as an app reference for and some practice and developing the world, developing the code. And even the concept is uh, you are not clear with the concept means you can again rewatch it 
So the concept will be get clear. Okay. So and what is the next benefit? So next benefit is so you will have you will, we are going to do lots of hands-on practice on embedded projects, and you are going to implement the uh, order project I have teached you, and uh, you are going to implement those in uh, real time by yourself. So while developing the project, you will get uh, lots of errors and uh, lots of bugs. So you can in this internship we will provide a uh, lots of practice on embedded projects, and you can ask the questions to doubts clear the doubts to myself as a me. Okay. And what is the next benefit? So next benefit means you will get a 30 days of download presentations. So I am uh, giving a presentation right uh, for 30 days. So you will get this plus additionally what you will get is uh, what are the things we are using. We are using um, data manual, reference manual, programming manual, user manual, all, lots of things. So those are all the things uh, what are we are using to develop the code and uh, all the things we use to learn the code concepts and communication protocols all. Those files also will be included in this. 30 days of downloadable presentations. So you will get the presentations as well as uh, the what are the things we are using for developing the code and the projects. And also in addition, you are going to get a course that I am developing. So I have uh, developing a code in live sessions, right? So those codes are going to be .c files. It will be the uh, shared as uh, in a format of .c file. So you can refer to those codes also. So it will be exclusively available for these internship students. So you can uh, use, uh, you can get these, those codes also. So you can use those codes for reference also, okay? And what is the next benefit? Is, uh, we will have a uh, one to one uh, live session. So, what is this? Is you can interact with me for one hour uh, every Saturday class. So, you can ask the uh, doubts, you can clear the topics, doubts related to the topic which I have taken from the day zero to till the day. Or even you can ask the doubts related to the Ember uh, systems uh, out of the topics which I have. Uh, now, I am taking STM32, right? If you have a doubts related to the other microcontrollers or you are doing lots of uh, other or you are involved in uh, other embedded projects, you have a doubt related to those projects or you have doubt related to this uh, other microcontroller means you can also use those uh, mastermind class to sessions to ask the questions related to the out of the session also. So you can ask the doubts related to the embedded systems out of this STM32 also. So you can use this uh, mental life as this. Opportunity. So this is a uh, this is about how you are using your this opportunity. How you will make you make use of it. So you can use you can uh, also you can uh, as uh, ask me to. You can also prefer me to do and uh, take some new topics uh, like uh, some topics you some core concepts you like to be learn right. You will be you would be want to learn those concepts. So you can even you can say it in my Saturday class to me directly. So I can prepare on those topics and I will be giving a giving a presentation in this internship. So it will be very much exclusive for the internship students only. Okay. So those are uh, even uh, out of the topic not uh, based on STM. If you can ask if you want uh, other topic more than out of this team is you can also ask me that. So you can uh, prefer me that. So I will take this uh, I will get into the topic and implement those things and I will be giving you a recorder session for you and also I will give a code on developing those things and if for while if implementing in a real time. So these are the benefits you can uh, get by this uh, internship. So this is uh, about how you are using this uh, opportunity. Okay. So next is after registering, you will get an uh, internship confirmation letter. So after registering, you will get a confirmation letter and two, you are going to get a two e-certificates. What is this benefit? So you can use this certificates in the resumes. So what is the benefits? So we are uh, learning the STM32 based on ARM Codex M4, which is an uh, industrial based uh, controller in a register level, right? We are not using a advanced library, all libraries are uh, some things which will be very much easy like Arduino, Arduino programming. So we are getting into a register level. So it is in, in a from zero to ground. We are starting from ground to advanced, right? So this is a basic step. So we have to know for know about registers to develop the all GPU like drivers. So we are uh, we are learning STM32 in a register level. So this certificate will be very much useful for you. So what are the two certificates we are going to do? We are going to give a two certificates. One is for uh, participation, and another one is for post completion on this STM32 register level. Okay, so it will be very much useful to you. So, so the internship fees is thousand two hundred. So don't be, don't be afraid. So you don't have to pay this full amount. You can use this ESMC one coupon code so that you can get this five on nine discount. And the discount fees is six ninety one hundred. Okay, so you can uh, get the internship at six ninety one hundred. So this is the registration link, guys. Uh, this registration link will be available in the chat box. Uh, you can see this, and or you can see this uh, description box. In the description box, this uh, registration link will be available. So join us, internship user, and uh, use this uh, internship as a 
upskilling opportunity for us. Okay. So we will uh, get into the concept. We are going to see this. Uh, so the Pantech e-learning is uh, offering a hundred percentage placement for your students who are who was uh, trying to get into the embedded engineering domain or Python domain, Java, data science domain, artificial engineers, and electric vehicle engineering. So these are the domains uh, we are focusing on. The Pantech e-learning is focusing on these uh, domains and uh, providing a hundred percentage placement for these domain-based uh, industries and companies. So guys, uh, you can enter for this. This uh, link and uh, link will be provided in the description description box and as well as uh, chat box. Or you can also use this uh, QR to scan the scan and enroll. So you can join our team. Want to make a career as an uh, whatever uh, domain you needed. So what is the thing we are going to do here is uh, we are going to we are analyzing the industries around us. So uh, we are uh, seeing what are the technologies they are asking for them asking from the students. What is the technology they have uh, the industry required? So what is the technology that the industry needed? So we are uh, analyzing those things. And as per the industrial uh, requirements, we are uh, training the students and we are uh, teaching them how to attend the interview and all the things. And we are giving them a percent placement on based on the domain core industry. So if you take Amber, you will take a scenario of Amber engineer. So you will get a place in the Amber domain. So we are the training is going to be based on the what is the uh, as per the industry's requirements? So, what are the technologies they are asking from the students? So, those technologies going to be teached you, going to be get teacher train you, going to train you for the this course for uh, up to three to six months, and we are going to give you uh, offer you, uh, we are going to make you placed in this your dream company. Okay, so guys, uh, don't miss this opportunity. So, you can uh, enroll in this. So, enroll as soon as uh, to get this. Lots of offers are uh, going on. So, you can. Uh, Enroll uh, who's uh, who's getting first will get the best offer. So register this and get a best offer and get placed in a your dream company. Okay. Now the Laura is playing a vital role in the IoT domain. So the, all the IoT devices uh, getting connected with this Laura. So now we will I will say uh, one example. Okay. So now I am creating a smart agriculture system. Okay. My uh, farm is in the distance of Two to five kilometers. Okay, and uh, my farm is not getting a current signal, Wi-Fi signal, or a cellular data, or nothing. It is receiving that. We don't. We can't get that data uh, network there. So, from uh, my home to the, from my house to the, the farm is the distance is five kilometers. But in my house there is a so cellular network. So what I will do is now I will uh, create a control. I will place a controller in the farm. With an uh, with interfacing a sensors like a moisture sensor, water pump system, like this, all the things, and I will I will place the another my controller. Uh, we will consider ESP32, which is such as an inbuilt Wi-Fi. Okay, so I will connect another. I will place this another ESP32 in my uh, house, and and I will connect this uh, LoRa to it, and I also connect the LoRa to this uh, controller, which is in the form. So what is now it is going to happen is. The controller in this form is going to read the data of a moisture sensor, temperature, humidity, and it is going to send the data to the ESP32. And how it is going to transfer the data to ESP32? It is going to transfer the data to from LoRa transmitter. So the form, the microcontroller in the form will have a LoRa, LoRa transmitter, which is a long range, and we will have an ESP32 as a receiver. So this LoRa receiver will receive the data from the LoRa transmitter and now we have now inbuilt Wi-Fi in this uh, inbuilt Wi-Fi network in this uh, ESP32. So we will connect it, connect it with the cloud. Uh, sorry, we will connect it with the cloud. And what we will next do it next we will we will connect it with the AWS cloud. Okay, we will say it as an AWS cloud, and we will see the we will uh, get the data from the PC or a mobile device. So we will get the data of moisture. What is the moisture of the sand and what is uh, soil? So, what is the humidity? What is the temperature? So, as per this, we can, as per the moisture uh, sensor reading, the pump is going to be hacked and the water is going to be flowing automatically. And even if we want to, even if we want to uh, supply the water uh, at the specified time, means we can give it in the phone itself. So, by using the mobile smartphone itself, we can use those uh, UI to access these things. So, what is this? Uh, what is the problem here? Uh, solved is. That does not need a human interaction, and there is a efficient of work output, and we can efficiently manage the crops. 
So this is how this is a one of the example. Like this, Lora is developing in all the fields, like in industrial applications. When the all the missionaries they are placing all the Lora in the all the missionaries and all the inside the industries uh, to locate and to transfer the data also like this things. So this is why Lora is playing a vital role and why it is getting award. Okay. So you can see we have a you will see what is the bandwidth with the range. Bandwidth is a data transfer and range is the distance. So you can see here we have this uh, Wi-Fi BLE in this. We have high bandwidth, but the range is short. When it comes with our cellular network, it is as a high bandwidth and high range. But what is the problem? Is so you will get an high power consumption. So that is the another problem. So only they have invented this LoRa. So what is this LoRa is having is it is a data transfer rate will be low and the range will be longer. So this is what. So by uh, range is longer, we can use this for lots of sensors. We can do lots of things with. It. Okay. So we will see those uh, things. So I say this. I can see this. This is a picture which uh, describes the before I have given this uh, smart agriculture example, right? So this is how it is working. So it will be connected with the LoRa device. It will be connected to this uh, LoRa gateway. So we can connect this LoRa to the LoRa gateway also. We have a separate LoRa gateways for those. But instead of that, we are going to use this uh, for cost efficiency. We are going to use this uh, ESP32. So we are going to use this ESP32 as an LoRa gateway, and we are going to use this AWS as a cloud, and we are going to use this uh, website or a smartphone for this uh, UA user interface. Okay. So this is the process. Now, why LoRa? So what are the advantages by using LoRa? First is ultra low power. So LoRa when ends the device are optimized to operate in the low power mode and can last up to 10 years on a single coin cell battery. So this is the main advantage. So you can see we can use this module in a for this uh, 10 years on a single coin cell of battery. And next uh, advantage is uh, next uh, big advantage is it is long range. So LoRa when gateway can transmit and receive the signals over the distance of over 10 to 15 kilometers in the low radius and up to 3 kilometers in dense urban areas. Okay. So this is another reason. So next is deep indoor penetration. So LoRa when networks can provide a deep indoor coverage and easily covers a multiple four buildings. And the license it is a license free spectrum. So it is a another advantage. Then geolocation. So this uh, can determine the location of a end device using this triangulation without a need of GPS. So by using this uh, LoRa, we can obtain this location of the other device without using this GPS. This is a another advantage. Okay. So next is high capacity. So network servers answer millions of messages from the thousands of gateways. So we will have lots of gateways, gateways to transfer these data. Then public and private deployments. Okay. So what they say is it is easy to deploy public and private LoRa networks using the same hardware gateways like hardware like gateways, end devices, and antennas, and softwares like UDP packets and basic uh, softwares and uh, LoRa and stacks like these things. So next is end-to-end -end security. So ensure this will ensure the secure secure communication between these end devices and the application servers using the AES-128 encryption. So this is a number for the encryption. So next is the firmware updates over the app. So this is another main benefits. So you can remotely update the firmware for a single end device or a group group of end devices. So then so we will come with roaming. So lower end device end devices can perform a seamless and handovers from one network to another. And next main thing is it is a low cost. So minimal infrastructure. The low cost end nodes and open the open source softwares are for this available for these LoRa's. Then the certification programs uh, they are providing the certification pro programs, the LoRa alliances certification programs to the end devices and provides the end users with the confidence that the device are reliable. So this is uh, another advantage. And the ecosystem. So a very large ecosystem of the device makers and the gateway makers, antenna makers, and um, Network service, uh, network service providers and application developers. These are the things creating an ecosystem. So it is uh, working in all these places. Okay. So next is we are going to see the LoRa use case. Where are we are using these LoRa's 
how it is benefited. Okay. So first, first is vaccine cold chain monitoring. So the sensors are used to ensure the vaccine are kept at the appropriate temperature in the transit. So we can uh, measure those uh, temperature and we can uh, may, uh, continuously those uh, data of those uh, vaccines to ensure it to kept at the appropriate temperature. Then is animal conservation. So the tracking sensors manage the endangered species such as uh, black rhinos and leopards to keep it safer. Next is dementia patients. Okay. So the for the patients, they are creating these wristband sensors, provides the fall detection and medication tracking. So this will help the patients in a more beneficial way. So next is I have already given this example, smart farms. So real-time insight into a crop soil moisture and optimize the irrigation schedule, reduce the water use up to 30%. By using the uh, smart irrigation, we can use uh, reduce the water and we can give a efficient crop output. Okay. So next is water conservation. By identification and the faster repair of leaks in the city water networks. So this will make us a uh, water conservation. Next is food safety. The temperature monitoring ensures the food quantity of the maintenance. So by we can now uh, monitor this temperature of the foods to ensure its quantity maintenance. Okay. Next is smart waste bins. Waste sorry, smart waste bins. So what this waste bins will do is uh, bins, uh, waste bins will alert uh, sends to the staff so optimize to pick up the schedule. So we can use in these in the smart way like this. So like those are smart bikes, airport trackings, efficient uh, workspaces, catalysts like this and even in the LoRa in the space, like our satellite to provide our LoRa when based coverages worldwide. So these are the use cases and lots are getting awarded. So, so in the end of this uh, masterclass, we are going to develop the project, right? So we are going to develop the project based on the smart irrigation, uh, smart agriculture system. So we are going to use this uh, LoRa based concept. So that's why we are getting into, we are seeing what is LoRa and what are the use cases and we will get to it. Okay. So next we are going to develop the code. Okay. So you will get into the code. So before getting into the code, we will get into the so we have to add the packages, uh, add these packages for the STM32. So we are going to add the LoRa package, LoRa library for the STM32. So go to the MX and first we have to select this uh, controller which uh, we are going to use. So I will construct this uh, controller, which is uh, so. What are the things I'm going to do is I'm going to enable this uh, clock setup, which is external clock. So we will uh, enable this uh, external clock. Then we have to get to the connectivity and go to SPA one. And enable in this uh, full duplex master. Okay. So what is the next thing we are going to do? Going to do is uh, we have set this uh, SPA one communication in this uh, full duplex mode. Next, we are going to configure this uh, external clock to make it as 720 megahertz. Uh, and I will run this uh, APB bus in 36 megahertz. Uh, okay. So this will uh, set my clock configuration. So yeah, so I'll be right. So searching for the solution, right? Yeah. Okay. Now we have to set this. Uh, 
इनपुट फ्रीक्वेंसी है सही बिकॉज और क्लॉक इज और पिस्टल ऑसिलेटर है सही मैगस राइट सो ओके नाउ वी आर सेटल दिस पीएल क्लॉक वन नाइस आर एस थर्टी सिक्स मैगस एंड टाइमर सेवेंटी टू एंड ये आल्सो सेवेंटी टू ओके सो नाउ वी विल गेट इनटू द पिनोट कॉन्फ़िगरेशन ओके सो नाउ व्हाट वी आर सेट दिस वी आर सेट दिस पीस्केल वैल्यू टू दिस एट ओके सो दिस इज़ गोइंग टू Let me please get a value at uh, nine MB. My garbage, okay, and this should be low. Okay, so these are the things so we have to set up for this uh, SPA. Then what is the next thing is we will get into the GPIO. Okay, go to the GPIO and make this uh, PCI fire sana GPIO output. So this is a uh, GPA output. Then next pin is next pin also make it as a GPA output. And next is we are going to set this uh, PB zero as an interrupt, external interrupt GPA or external interrupt of zero. So now we are going to label these things. So what is this uh, PB zero? Is so I am going to set it as an PI. See, okay. So this is the label. Wait. Okay. So then we have to set this uh this pin as an I and and we are going to label this uh, PC four as an NSS pin. Then we are going to label this uh. PC five make it as an I and we are going to label it as an RST reset. Okay. So we yes, so are the these are the things we have to do next. Uh, wait. Okay. So we have done these uh, configurations. Okay. So okay. So now we will. We have configured this uh, SPA clock and timer, right? So now we will get into this uh, project, and we are going to name it as Laura. Okay, Laura. What we are going to do is uh, MPK. Go to the code generator and copy only the necessary libraries. So then. Portion of okay, portions okay. So then we can generate these codes. We will generate the code. Then open the project. So it is going to open the gate. So now we have we have this uh, dot C file here. Okay. So we will delete this unwanted things first. Next, we will take these things. And we have this uh, space and our uh, GPIOs. Yeah. Okay. So we have set up these functions. So what is the next thing we are going to do is we are going to add this uh, library. So what you have to do is go to this output and uh, CCP of this. 
So before this, you have to go to the sub file manager. So I have already just uh, downloaded this uh, library. So I will give this in this uh, WhatsApp link, okay, guys? Or I will give this uh, library in this uh, downloadables. So you can see we have this uh, loaded library for dot h file and dot c file. So I'm going to make this a uh, copy, okay? And I will make it paste. Okay. So I will paste this uh, library here. Okay. So now we have pasted this library. So what is the next thing you have to do is go to this uh, output and uh, go to this include path and add this uh, include path. And this include by as a lower okay. So now we have added this uh, path. So what is the next thing we have to do is so then go to this uh, go to the settings and uh, we have to add this uh, driver here. So add a folder. Get my driver, my drivers, add a file. So go to this uh, Laura and add this folder. Okay. So add this file here. So now we have added this. So then click OK. So you can see now our Laura.c file is added. So what is the next thing we have to do is we have to include this uh, Laura file. So, so, Laura dot H. Okay. So it is guys. So guys, uh, now we will reinitialize this program and uh, we will add this uh, library again. Okay. So we have added this uh, library in a uh, wrong way. So now we will add this now. Uh, so go to this uh, same thing. So go to this uh, add the part in this uh, where you have to go to this. Uh, you have to go is, go to this output and go to the C C C and C plus plus browse. Add file. So you have to browse for it. Okay. So where it is load out. So it is here, right? So load out this folder. So folder is added. So now you can see the folder is added, right? So what is the next thing you have to do is we have to add this. Here we have to add the flow. Add the driver. Okay. My drive. Drivers. Okay. So in this, I'm going to add this dot uh, C file. Right. Now we have added this uh, dot c file. So we will close this. Okay. Now the file has been added. So now I will include this. So what is the before mistake we did this? Uh, we didn't uh, add this uh, Laura fold Laura file in this. Uh, in the within this form, so we just uh, type this uh, Laura name. So we have to browse this and we have to select this folder. Then we have to add this. Uh, so you can see now the library is available. Okay. So now, So now we will get into the code and develop the code. Okay. So what is the first thing I have to do is I have to declare this uh, Laura. So I will declare it by Laura. I will call it as my 
lower all. Okay. So we have declared this uh, lower all, and we, I'm going to create this uh, status for the lower all. So it is going to return my lower all status. So equal to zero. Then, then we will get into this uh, main function. Okay. Okay. So, what is the next thing we are going to include? Is uh, we have to we have to mention this uh, pins, right? So, we have initialized this uh, GPU and SP. So, this we have to initialize our LoRas. So, my my lower okay. I'm going to make this call. So in this first we have to set this. First I will set this as my lower or is gonna okay. So I'm going to call this sub function. So what is the next thing I'm going to do is next thing is I'm going to select this uh, NSS pin. NSS pin and port. So you can see we have this uh, CSS. So which is a uh, save select. So both are same. NSS and CSS is same. Okay. So first we have to select this uh, port. So what is the port we have defined? So we have already defined this uh, pin as an I NSS. Okay. So NSS of GPA port. Okay. So what is the next thing we have to do is we have to configure this pin. So how this uh, NSS represent those NSS pin? So in uh, QBMX, we have already uh, declared the GPIO pin's name as defined this uh, GPIO pin name as an NSS and RST. So we are using those uh, keywords here. So NSS pin. So what is the next thing I have to do is next thing is I have to select this uh, reset reset pin and port. So we have already created this RST GPIO port. Okay. So what's next thing is we have to select this uh, pin. Please. Okay. So now we have solved the pin RST of. So these are the things which is going to define the pin numbers. Okay. So next thing is next pin we have to define is uh, DIO and DIO zero. It's four pin. So in this we are going to give this we have already defined as zero. This. Next, finally, we have to select this uh, which SPA is we are going to use SPA one, two, or three. So in our case, we are going to we are configure this SPA. On right, so we are going to give it this. Equal to order of now. Now we have declared these values. So what is the final step we have to do is we have to declare the frequency. What is the frequency we are using? So what is the frequency? So we are using frequency is 433. It is the it is used in this Asia. When it comes to the Asia, we have to use this uh, in frequency of 433. When it comes to the US, it is uh, I think so it is 913 MHz. Okay. So these are things we have to set up at the start. So what is the next thing we have to do is we are going to check whether this uh, LoRa's status is okay or initialized or not initialized. Okay. For that, I'm going to create this uh, if. Can give this uh, my lower. So there will be a library function which is a uh, lower. Okay. So you are going to check it. When this uh, condition is satisfied and get into into this loop, it is going to 
सेट में लोअर स्टेटस ऐसा ना इक्वल टू वन सेट इज गोइंग सेट में स्टेटस ऐसा ना ओके सो वी हैव क्रिएट दिस फंक्शंस सो व्हाट इज द नेक्स्ट थिंग वी आर डू इज वी आर गोइंग टू वी हैव टू सेंड द डेटा राइट सो वी हैव टू सेंड द डेटा टू द another lower one so for that i am going to create a buffer book uh, sorry array first so in top tx buffer in this tx buffer i am going to send the stores like this three okay okay so what is the next thing is i am going to store the values in this tx buffer okay So we have stored this uh, values. Next, we have a function called lora transmit. So we will use this uh, function. In this function, what are the parameters we have to say? Is we have to say which lora we have to give this uh, address of my lora. Lora. Then I have to say the where is the uh, data i have to take from okay so tx buff in this tx buff what is the size length of the is 3 and the time out is i am going to do this as so this is going to send the data to the another lora which will be current okay so what is the next thing we are do we are going to do is we have created this uh, already created the inter right so we have set up this uh, gpio pin as an One pin as an external inter. So, what is the use of those inter? We have created this. It is for receiving. So, my lora is we have created the function for sending the data. So, now we are going to create the function for receiving the data. So, for that we are going to first. Uh, wait. First of all, we have to store the data, right? So, for that we have to create a array. So, we will talk. Rx buff. I will give a size of one twenty eight. Okay. So, in this array only, I am going to store the values. Okay. So, what is the uh, what is the thing we have to do is we have to give this uh, start receiving command. Start receiving. So we have to say in which uh, address my lower. Okay. So what is the next thing we have to create? Is we have to create this uh, inter parameter. Okay. Okay. Create a void of. So it is going to when this interrupt is occurred, it is going to call back. So when this uh, data is received from this uh, another lora, so it is going to generate an interrupt in this uh, D zero pin. So D zero pin and this interrupt will be get into the controller and it is going to call this function. Okay, so you went off sixteen of t in this. I am going to define this pin GPIO pin. Okay, so 
So what is function we have to do here is if this interrupt is uh, generated, we have to receive the data, right? So for that, I'm going to check this condition of GPIO pin. When this uh, condition is uh, true, then it will get into this loop and we are going to receive the data. Lora is it? Okay. In this I am going to give this address of my Lora. And I have to say the value to store, so Rx bar. Then I am going to say the size. Okay. So now we are also created a function for receiving. Okay, so now we will compare this and uh, so okay, we got no errors. So this is how we will uh, include this like it file into our, our ARM K and we will develop the code for Lora. So why do we do go go with the MQ by MX means because we are going to add this uh, Lora library. So in this uh, when we can't. Uh, I can't explain this uh, Lora library in a detailed way. We can't create those libraries because uh, it will take a lot of time. So instead of uh, time quick being, we are include this uh, Lora Lora dot C library in this uh, ARM kit. So this is how we will include and uh, we will send the data and receive the data. Okay. So now we will. So okay, guys. In next class, uh, we will develop the code for ESP32. Which is a LoRa receiver, and we are going to send the uh, send the data from this uh, STM32 to ESP32 in this uh, wireless communication. So we will meet on next session, guys. Thank you for today's session. We will meet on next session.